our celestial neighbor, the planet Mars. Astronomers once considered Mars to be a long, barren, and geologically dead rock in space. But since the arrival of our probes beginning in the 1960s, the planet has come alive for us. It does not reveal the inactive and worn down landscape astronomers and planetary scientists had expected. Nevertheless, investigators continue to apply geologic concepts based on their understanding of the Earth and the Moon. They could only see volcanism, erosion, surface movement, and surface collapse, all punctuated by episodic impacts from space over billions of years. What force created the sharply cut gouges and depressions across the surface of Mars? looking as if a giant trowel descended to scoop out material at radically different and irreconcilable depths. Running north to south, we see massive interwoven scratches or grooves extending hundreds of miles. And how remarkable that a planet only half the diameter of Earth exhibits canyons on a scale dwarfing anything seen on our own planet. And mountains that would tower over Mount Everest. Today, no planet outside the Earth has received more attention than Mars. But the mysteries and theoretical contradictions have grown spectacularly. For decades now, investigators have wondered why the two hemispheres of Mars look as if they were formed in different worlds. A southern hemisphere dominated by craters. A northern hemisphere with only sparsely scattered craters. And note the contrasting crustal depths of the two hemispheres. Shallow crust in the north, much thicker crust in the south. Why would a planet evolving in isolation display such a profound dichotomy? It's as if some unknown force excavated the northern crust miles deep. The hemispheric removal of crustal material requires a force external to Mars acting on the planet. But when it comes to external events, scientific convention has only one thing to work with, random collisions. Could a planetoid or huge asteroid crashing into Mars have removed millions of cubic miles of crust? A shattering impact is all that theory would allow. But what would Martian history look like were we to include electrical events, events on a scale sufficient to sculpt the surface of the red planet from pole to pole. Of all the enigmatic features in the solar system, perhaps none provokes greater amazement than Valles Marineris. The largest canyon on any planet or moon, the deep trench complex stretches a third of the way around the planet, hundreds of times larger than the Grand Canyon. It would reach from San Francisco to New York and beyond. Prior theory of planetary formation had never anticipated such a chasm on a small planet. What natural force excavated this colossal trench? With the arrival of the Mariner probes, NASA scientists thought the chasm could have been cut by water erosion, 
Though nothing even close was ever achieved by water on the known watery planet, Earth. On any erosional hypothesis, three million cubic miles of material were removed. Three million cubic miles, and it had to go somewhere. Neither the means of fluid drainage nor the vast outflow required are in evidence. Now we know that the Valles Marineris reaches to a greater depth than any outflow channel originally envisioned. And the tributaries imagined by some turned out to be cleanly cut alcoves and stubby depressions. They are not connected to feeder streams at all. One portion of the Valles Marineris system in particular underscores our point here. Planetary scientists acknowledge that Hebe's Canyon, much larger than our Grand Canyon, is an inseparable part of Valles Marineris. As scientists have now acknowledged, it was certainly not created by water. Nor is it plausible to suggest that surface spreading created the massive chasm of Valles Marineris with its repeated morphology of sharply scalloped walls. The surface was not torn, it was carved. And the detailed images imply a removal of material along the entire length of the chasm, a process clearly illustrated by the neatly machined so-called tributaries all the way up to their rounded, cleanly cut terminations. Whatever formed the canyon complex did not stop at the margins of the primary channel, but added irregular craters and crater chains and surface grooves and gouges. So the question cannot be escaped. Is there anything known to science today that can account for the extraordinary profile of Valles Marineris? There is an explanation well known to science, though it's never entered the geologist's lexicon. Lightning. In the laboratory, its power is demonstrated in electric discharge experiments. But the form unfamiliar to conventional science today is the cosmic thunderbolt, a primary theme of our own investigation. It was the brilliant engineer Ralph Jurgens who first suggested decades ago that a cosmic thunderbolt carved Valles Marineris. With the benefit of more recent data, electrical theorist Wallace Thornhill returned to this extraordinary possibility Yes, the electric hypothesis will unnerve many scientists, but it is the only hypothesis that meets the test of direct observation. Here is a scar left by an electric arc on a piece of wet wood. And a second example of a discharge to a piece of wood. Electric discharge provides a direct and complete explanation for the Valles Marineris. The so-called tributaries of the valley were cut by secondary streamers of the discharge. That is a typical signature of an electric arc when it cuts a surface channel. And here is the scar from electric discharge to an insulator. 
Notice in particular the network of secondary streamers to the left, a perfect counterpart to the western edge of Valles Marineris. It was long held that this remarkable region on Mars was the result of uplift, fracturing, and spreading. And from a distance it did look like fracturing. But with a closer view in front of us, it is simply irrational to cling to that interpretation. Material has been cleanly removed, exactly as in the discharging to the insulator. The evidence now available demands a new perspective, a larger field of view. In Thornhill's interpretation, the discharge took the form of a plasmoid not unlike the plasmoid from which a spiral galaxy is formed. On his website, Thornhill noted how the discharge effect spiraled upward to the east and downward to the west, an effect that shows up quite clearly on the elevation map given on his website. In fact, if we extend the view of the elevation map, we see an even larger effect. It seems that the spiraling trails to the east and west nearly completed two circles as they swung back toward the trench itself. But one difference between the northern and the southern extension stands out. The northern extension is entirely constituted of ravines and depressions while the southern extension consists of ridges and mountainous terrain. For this unusual contrast, electrical experiments offer a startling explanation. It was George Christoph Lichtenberg who in the 18th century first showed that electric arcs create ravine networks on more negatively charged surfaces and elevated ridges on more positively charged surfaces. Could it be that simple that a cosmic thunderbolt carving Valles Marineris acted on two regions of different charge, negative to the north and positive to the south? If such was the case, the only plausible cause of the charge differential would be an electrical exchange between Mars and other charged bodies in the past. And what was the relationship of these events to the hemispheric dichotomies, the removal of crustal material to the north, and the densely cratered southern hemisphere? In the electrical interpretation, the violent excavation of the surface to create Valles Marineris would have created immense deposits of sediment on surrounding topography. And indeed, we see that previous craters in the region were completely buried, with only the largest craters appearing as outlines penetrating through the deep deposits. It's apparent that the released material had a net drift to the west, since the blanket of deposited sediment stretches all the way to the eastern flank of the towering Olympus Mons. Keep in mind as well that an electric discharge at energies necessary to create the chasm of Valles Marineris would have ejected great volumes of rocky material into space. Much of the rocky debris would have fallen back to litter the margin landscape. And indeed, shattered rock of all sizes across the surface of Mars is a long-standing mystery. And the mystery is resolved by electrical events on a continental and even hemispheric scale. Given the energies of the events, considerable volumes of material would have surely escaped the planet altogether. And what might this tell us about the Mars-Earth connection in our reconstruction of ancient events? Or the surprising discovery that rocks from Mars have fallen on our own planet 